Schematic diagrams part two. We're going to look at the different types of circuits that you'll encounter in a schematic diagram. And when you first look at a schematic diagram, they get they're pretty intimidating. But if you can break that down circuit by circuit and understand what you're looking at, it uh, makes it much much simpler. So first we'll look talk about open and closed circuits. Then we'll discuss the power line switch and load and, and their significance. Then we'll examine series parallel and series parallel circuits. Open and closed circuits. Um, when you're talking about schematic diagrams and electrical circuits, there are open circuits and closed circuits or made circuits. Now for any electrical circuit to operate properly you must have a complete path for the current to flow so that it starts out at one side of the electrical connection flows through the circuit to the load and then back to the return side. That is called a made circuit or a closed circuit. That means that the switch that controls it or the device that controls the circuit is closed. An open circuit is just as it sounds. It, the switch is open. Now we don't have a complete path for the current to flow. So in this circuit, if this was a fan mo this fan motor uh, will not be turning. Whereas in this circuit that is made and the switch is closed, the fan motor will be operating because we have that complete circuit. So every circuit that you're going to take a look at and every diagram that you have will have what I call the power, line, switch, and the load. And you need to have all four of those operating properly for a an electrical circuit to operate. So the power, that is just your incoming power, the 120 volts that comes in from the wall. For example, um, the, the uh, lamp that you have plugged into the wall. Now, you, there's always a switch to control uh, the circuit because most of the time you don't want something running continuously. So you, you have a switch. The line or the path for the current to to follow would be the wires that come out of the wall through the switch and then they go up to this this fan motor and the load that's what does all the work in any type of circuit and that those tend to be uh, motors and in this example it's a fan motor so let's take a look at uh, the power line switch and load so in this circuit we have 120 volt power if we have 120 volt power we have the line or the path for this the current to flow and the switch is closed and we have a load then we have a complete electrical circuit and every electrical circuit will have um, the power line switch and load there there will be some exceptions where uh, switch is not present but for um, HVAC purposes 99% of the time it's power line switch and the load All right, the first circuit we're going to look at is a series circuit. It's called a series circuit because all of the components in the circuit are connected in a straight line between the power source. So let's take a look at the power line switch and load first. L1 and L2 are the designators for the power coming in. We have 208 volts for we have so we have the power. We have the line or the path for the current to flow. And in this circuit we have one switch, high pressure switch, two switches, the low pressure switch, and the third switch is the thermostat. All of these must be made or closed and then that complete path is present and this electric motor will operate because we have all four components that we need in this circuit. Now the one thing about a series circuit is if any component is open or not made in in the path the circuit doesn't operate 
So if the high pressure switch is open, everything stops. The mo electric motor doesn't run. If the low pressure switch is open, the current flows through the path through the high pressure switch and it stops at the low pressure switch, the motor doesn't run again. Or if the thermostat is not made or is open, everything runs through till it hits the open thermostat, stops, we don't have a complete path for the current to flow, electric motor doesn't run. When you're looking at a series circuit, it's usually a control circuit and you have all of these switches and safety devices in line and it controls one load. So if any of the any of these switches are open, the electric motor doesn't operate and the thermostat is the control, the low pressure and high pressure switches are safety devices. So that's what it series circuit is used for in HVAC is, is normally the control circuits and safety circuits. Here's another example of a series circuit here with um, a high temperature limit, a fan switch, and a fan motor. So in this instance we have only two control devices but again everything is in series because it's, it's a straight line between the power source and the return line. Parallel circuits. This is just a basic parallel circuit and as, as you'll notice we don't have any switches in it at this point. Parallel circuits are used for loads and the reason that, that we have to have um, our loads in parallel is that each one of these loads, the light bulb, the fan motor, the compressor, and the heater in this diagram need 120 volts to operate properly. And when you have a parallel circuit, you have a complete path to flow through the light bulb at 120 volts. There's a complete path through the fan motor, again, at 120 volts between this point and this point. Same with the compressor and same with the heater. If we had another light bulb in this position right here, then this light bulb, of course, would come on, but it takes some of the voltage from the power source and drops that voltage, then the, this light bulb would be dim. This fan motor wouldn't run properly, nor would this compressor run properly. So all, all of the loads in a um, air conditioning circuit and in a schematic diagram are in parallel. Now here's a very simple schematic diagram to represent a series parallel circuit. And first of all, let's take a look at each circuit itself. Here is our power, power supply. And we're going to say that's 208 volts coming in. And let's, let's identify, first of all, our power, which we have. We have our lines to bring the power. We have a switch, in this case, that's open. And then we have a load. So we, ha we have a proper circuit. But CFM2, which is the con second condenser fan motor at, in this circuit, isn't operating. And you'll see here is our load. Here's another load. Here's another load and here's another load and they're all in series across our power. And then each one of these circuits will have a switch in series with the load. So there's one and this one has a high pressure switch, low pressure switch and thermostat that is controls that contactor. So you can see that we have several different loads all in parallel because they're across our power input and then those loads are controlled by switches which are in series and if any one of these switches breaks or opens then the load doesn't operate properly so that's where you're going to see a series parallel circuits 
um, nearly every circuit in an HVAC schematic diagram is a series parallel circuit similar to what we're seeing here. Okay, so some things to remember. Electricity always follows the path of least resistance no matter what. Um, and again, we each one of our circuits, we need to have the power source. We need to have a path for the uh, power to and current to flow. We need to have a load, which is the device that does the work and consumes the power. And you have to have at least one switch. Most of them will have at least one switch to control that circuit on and off. All right, so that is the end of part two on schematic diagrams. If you have any questions, please contact me at HVAC Training Solutions at gmail.com.